Hi folks, just wanted to do a quick introduction to the career development brief. Because everyone has different employment circumstances at the moment and different CVs with different levels of experience, um, for this particular brief, I'm going to give two different options. So there will be a portfolio option and a work experience option. And there'll be two separate briefs. So you pick one or the other. You do not need to do both. And that's to try and keep the requirements as broad as possible to try and suit your individual need. Okay, so I'm just going to do a brief overview of both of those options here. So the portfolio brief, I'll post up online and we'll have a good bit more detail. The broad overview of it or the, the kind of headline deliverables are you'll need to create a demo reel, you'll need to curate some kind of online presence and you'll need to submit a cover letter and a CV. You will need to produce something like this to go and get work within the area. So this will be something that you will need to have anyway at the end of the course so we can facilitate that process now within this module. The other brief is the work experience brief uh, and the work experience manual or the work experience brief is a little bit more meaty because it applies to a variety of courses uh, across LIT. Uh, but the headlines there are you'd need to complete 100 hours, which is about two and a half weeks, uh, within a workplace, ideally uh, within a design workplace or design and media so that you could make use of the skill sets developed on this program. Now, that's not a requirement. Um, we have facilitated people going on work experience in, in industries that would not be directly related to a particular program. And they gain a lot. You gain a lot through uh, working with colleagues and being given responsibilities within a company, uh, working within teams, delivering to deadlines, etc. Um, but ideally, like I say, it would be uh, using some of the skill sets developed on the program. The work experience brief can be completed within the current workplace. And again, ideally, you'd be using the, the skill sets developed on the program. The work experience component is uh, assessed through a written report, of about a thousand words, and through signed logs. So you need to get those signed off uh, by the workplace supervisor. Now, I'll talk about the portfolio brief one in a separate video, and I'll give some hints and tips as to how to go about um, building your own portfolio in the best way for this industry. But just some of the highlights of it would include, you know, showcasing your skill set uh, for potential employers. Uh, you'll get, you can gain a lot of exposure through doing it, particularly through the online component. And it helps us to polish off the work, to get to work to a certain standard. Um, we do this, traditionally we would use a demo rail, and this is particularly important for motion work, animation, VFX, rigging, that kind of thing. But it's also uh, traditionally how you would go about showing things like models, or environment props, things that might not necessarily move. In the last few years, we've seen the rise of sites catering towards CG artists. Uh, so there's also an online presence component to this brief where you will need to, you'll need to collate and curate some of your work and put it up online. And this could be through a personal website if you've got one of those already, or you could use uh, professional sites that are out there that are aimed towards the CG market. I'm going to go through that in a lot more detail when we look at what should go into a portfolio and how they should be built. So I'll leave that one for now. Uh, for the work experience component, I will post up the work experience manual. The general gist of it is that you will, you apply to a job, they take you on as an intern, they need to uh, assign someone as your supervisor in the workplace. There'll be an academic supervisor, that'll be me in this case. There, we need to do a quick meeting, 15, 20 minutes, between yourself, the students, the workplace supervisor, and myself, just to make sure that everyone's happy. I usually do that uh, at the end of the first week, uh, starting into the second week. Uh, the, uh, there is a logbook to be filled out by the student, which gets signed off by the workplace supervisor, and then in the end you do a formal assessment, which also needs to be signed off by your workplace supervisor. Now, the learning outcomes and now, there's a lot more detail within the work placement manual, including the learning outcomes. Um, I'm not going to read down through all of these right now. You can read through those in the manual. The reason that I'm putting them up here is to say that they are quite broad and fairly generic. So these work placements, uh, kind of learning outcomes, the kind of broad point of doing this uh, and what you should gain from it are written in a broad way because we have placed students across a variety of industries and a variety of companies. So we need to have some learning outcomes that are not specific to a, one particular industry. Um, so you will find that they're, they're fairly broad and that's to our advantage in this case 
because that means that if you're within a job currently and you would like to uh, complete the work placement brief, you should find that these uh, learning outcomes are broad enough to be applied to pretty much any host organization. And you can read through those uh, in more detail in section 1.3 of the work placement manual. The work placement is assessed through a work placement report of uh, a thousand words or more. Um, you need to complete some weekly logs and some monthly logs which need to be signed off. Now I'll post some examples in the class folder so you can take a look through those uh, to get a, a feel for what students have done in the past. There is a spreadsheet of companies to get you started in, play, in terms of places that you can apply to and I'll include that in the work placement folder as well. Uh, there is also some links to uh, job descriptions. Now these are generic job descriptions that the film board have posted up into a, a website called Career and Screen and I was commissioned actually to write the visual effects one and the CG animation one and these will give you a broad overview of different uh, job roles. So you can see here if we take a quick look at the VFX one uh, there's a whole load of different uh, kind of levels that you could take a look at. So for example, we could go and take a look at the modeling one here and you've got character modeling, modeling supervisor or prop modeler. Uh, we can take a look at prop modeler here and it will give you a uh, kind of a generic overview of what you might expect from a prop modeler. Now different companies will have their own specific needs for each job role obviously, but it might give you an idea for tailoring your CV. So those are the two brief options for the career development component. To help me keep track of who's doing what, I'm going to send out a Google form to your email address. So it'll be very short, it'll, you'll fill it out in less than 30 seconds. So you could fill that out for me just so I can keep track of who's doing what. Because this is a shorter form course uh, in terms of the amount of time I have with you, I imagine that for most people going for the work experience brief, you will need some demo reel or some kind of portfolio regardless. So if you don't have one of those already, you're more, most likely going to do the portfolio brief. Uh, if you do have one of those and you're fairly happy with where that's at, you could push ahead with the work experience brief. Uh, if you want to try and complete it within your workplace, it should be broad enough to facilitate that. Any specific questions you have about your particular scenario, you can shoot me off an email or you can hit me up on Slack.